another one? Hear me speak? I think I can hear it in the. How am I on the Zoom? Are we all set? Okay. Okay. All right. Here's a little test. Test on the check. Rod, can you can you hear, Jason? Hi, Rod. Yes, it's it's a little high. It's a little soft. Okay, Rod. Um, That's good. Okay, I'll speak up because. <laughs> okay. morning. Our opening hymn this morning is number 544. Welcome to Christ Episcopal Church for our celebration of the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. And we extend our welcome to those who are worshiping with us online this morning. The responses in the service can be found either if you are here in person in the booklet you received on the way in, or 
on the slides displayed online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to and you all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, known, and from you no, no secrets, secrets are hid. Cleanse the, the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those, sorry, <coughs> those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. 
The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercessions for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue this week uh, with hymn number 506, our stewardship hymn, this week singing verses 1 and 4. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up. He is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I have so much enjoyed singing that hymn, Praise the Spirit in Creation, over and over for these uh, weeks of our stewardship campaign, of our uh, praying and making ourselves ready for our pledge commitment in just a few Sundays on November 14th. We will ask you to return those pledge cards, uh, the certificates you received uh, a few weeks ago in the mail or could find online. 
And I love this particular verse in it, the fourth verse, uh, as it details to tell of Jesus who equipped his followers with his word so that a hundred men and women would turn their known world upside down. A beautiful and poetic phrase of the people armed, equipped with what Jesus has given them, able to go out and be a part, just a few in number, just a few men and women sent out to turn their known world upside down. Because it's that encounter with Jesus Christ, that encounter with uh, the word, that being equipped with his word and hearing from him, it's that encounter with Jesus that we read about in this story from the Gospel of Mark in chapter 10, uh, the story of Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, who in this story, uh, the figure of Bartimaeus meets Jesus. He has this encounter with him as he's on the way from Jericho, going in and out of Jericho, on his way to Jerusalem. At the end of this reading, it's the end of chapter 10, if you were to turn the page in a Bible to chapter 11, the very next story is the entry into the city of Jerusalem in Mark 11. The moment we celebrate every Palm Sunday when Jesus, it says he came with a large crowd of followers they're going to Jerusalem to pick up their palm branches and shout Hosanna on their way into the city for the week uh, that we call the week of the passion, the week where Jesus is going to that week of earthly life before going to the cross. And so we have this story at this important hinge moment in the, in the scriptures. Jesus has gathered his disciples, his followers, ever since the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. We remember how when he was still in Capernaum up on the Sea of Galilee, Jesus would wander along and called the fishermen to come and follow him. He found Simon and Andrew and James and John and called out to them, Come, follow me, he says. That was it. Just follow me. And the scriptures say, they dropped their nets and they followed him. Many people have started to wonder, what was it about Jesus that would make fishermen, Simon and Andrew, James and John, just in that moment, it says immediately in Mark's gospel, they just dropped their nets and followed him. They left behind everything, the, the boats, the fishing nets that gave them their livelihood. People have tried to speculate if Jesus was in his preaching just a charismatic person, the kind of person who when they say something you kind of sit up and want to do it and that's what happened. Maybe it was something else. They had heard stories about miracles already and were ready to follow the miracle worker of Galilee because they knew of his fame already. Maybe it was something about that. But I think as I reflect on these stories of people who encountered Jesus <coughs> and they had their lives turned upside down, and they joined the number of those hundred men and women who turned their world around them upside down. I can't draw myself to anything other than that, that encounter with Jesus in that moment was not because they found a charismatic preacher that they were sort of swooned by, or that they were astonished by his miracle working, but I think that they found someone who that they knew loved them, that they had encountered in Jesus divine love, and that is a love that is so powerful, it changes everybody that it touches. Everyone who encounters it cannot be the same afterward. And so we see the fishermen had no trouble letting go of their nets to follow that divine love. We see at the end of this story about Bartimaeus. I mean, yeah, the healing miracle is significant, but the healing comes out of divine love that they had encountered in Jesus Christ, something that they had to get up and follow, that there was a change that happened within them. There was a movement that happened, a literal physical movement of following Right? We know that Simon and Andrew and James and John got up and followed. They went from Galilee down to Jerusalem. We see Bartimaeus who says he immediately 
followed Jesus after this encounter. He got up and moved and followed. He had speed and velocity and direction and all of the things that happen when we start to follow after Jesus. And again, in this story, like the story of the fishermen, there was a, there was a need, there was the act of giving something up. It's almost a detail in the story that when Bartimaeus hears and sees that Jesus has called him to come, it says that he got up, he sprang up to, follow Je- to come to Jesus and threw off his cloak. Right? He threw his cloak behind, like the fishermen who had their fishing nets and were ready to drop them and follow him in the moment. So Bartimaeus also throws off his cloak, he casts it behind him. For a person who is known to be a beggar, to have perhaps very few possessions, if anything, beyond this cloak at all. It's an act just like the nets that represented the livelihood of the fishermen. It was the well-being of the man who lived out in the elements and lived out in the cold. One of the few things to give protection and comfort, and he threw it behind him. He let it go. And when we think of those uh, few hundred men and women who went out to turn the world upside down, uh, equipped with that encounter with Jesus, that encounter with the Word, uh, that we are full of his- examples in history of Christians who have done acts like this, of the saint- we, most of them we call saints these days, whether formally or informally, the saints of Christian faith. We think of stories like the story of St. Alban, the first person from England to be martyred, to die for his faith. It was around the year 300, he was a Roman soldier tasked with persecuting Christians. He was uh, supposed to be uh, helping the Roman Empire in killing Christians. And at some point, he encountered a priest. And in that moment of hearing the word, probably receiving the sacraments, baptism and Holy Eucharist and so on, Alban has an encounter with Jesus. And as the story goes, after his baptism, he traded his Roman soldier's uniform with the priest for the vestments the priest was wearing. And they swapped their clothes and went on their way, which meant the priest, disguised as a Roman soldier, would not be persecuted. But it meant that Alban would. And he took that moment to let go of his soldier's armor and to take up a cross and follow after Jesus. We know of St. Martin from France, also around the same time, another Roman soldier who, uh, being uh, riding along on his horse, encountered a beggar. Because we encounter Jesus in many ways. We encounter him in the word when we hear it read from the scriptures. We encounter Jesus at the altar in the sacrament. We encounter Jesus in the poor. We encounter Jesus in other people. And Martin had his moment where he saw the the, the man on the roadside and drew his sword, sliced his own cloak in half, and gave it to the beggar. Martin, as the legend goes, had a dream that night where he got to see Christ in heaven, and draped over the shoulders of Christ was that half of the cloak. As the story goes, one of the angels says to Jesus, nice cloak, Jesus, where did you get it? And he says, my friend Martin gave it to me, right? Someone who is willing to let something go out of his encounter with Jesus. We have St. Francis and so many others who, out of that encounter with divine love, found themselves changed and different for that encounter. And that encounter made it so easy, so different. They they were so changed by it, they could loosen their grip on something that they were holding on to. Their status as Roman soldiers, maybe it was the cloak of Bartimaeus, maybe it was the well-being of the nets that uh, was provided to the fishermen. They found it easy to loosen their grip on the things they were holding on to and that encounter, to let go and trust the one that they knew loved them. Some of you might even remember uh, the little moment in the scene, if I get away from the Middle Ages or the Roman Empire, right? More recently, right, you've, many of you probably saw the Charlie Brown Christmas special, 
Do you know this moment that I'm talking about? When Linus goes up on the stage at the school because he has to tell everybody what the true meaning of Christmas is all about. And for a couple of minutes of network television, he just reads the King James Bible, right? It's a pretty astounding little moment that happened uh, in there. And as he's going and telling the story, the one thing that you know about Linus from the Peanuts is that he's got his security blanket, right? Everywhere he goes, he must have the blanket. He cannot let go, and if he does let go of it, he doesn't do it willingly. Uh, and he kind of goes to pieces without it. And of course, as the detail in the animation goes, as he's telling the story of the birth of Christ, when he gets to that part where the angels come to the shepherds, and he says, do not be afraid, you'll see him wave his hands out, and in the moment, he says, do not be afraid, I bring you great news of glad joy. He stretches out his hands, and the blanket goes somewhere behind him. The only moment I think he ever willingly let go or parted with it. Because there's something, even, even in network TV, hearing the word and encountering Christ, hearing and having that encounter with Jesus, that that act of love and faith and trust changes us. The act of trust makes us different. It makes it easier to loosen our grip on whatever it is we're holding on to, a metaphorical security blanket if it's the nets, if it's the cloak, whatever it is, we are asked to find what that is. Because like Bartimaeus, Jesus is calling to us. He does ask each one of us, like him, what do you want me to do for you? In that loving encounter with the one in whom we can put our faith and our trust, Jesus welcomes us, calls us, encounters us in the word, in the sacrament, in each other, in the poor. And we get to ask God back now, what is it that you want me to do for you? We know the answer, to come and follow, to trust that our faith will make us whole, to get up and follow, like the fishermen who let go of their nets, like Bartimaeus who could let go of his cloak, and even like Linus who could drop his security blanket, we are able, through God's, through the faith that comes from the encounter with Jesus, to loosen our grip on the things around us, to come and follow, and equipped with that encounter with Jesus, to join that couple hundred men and women who followed him and moved to turn their known world upside down. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For Trinity Church, Audrey, Ayad, Barbara, Bob, Bruce, Carol, Cassidy, Charlie, Christine, Dan, Elise, Ginny, Janice, Mary Lou, Mike, Noah, Robert, Rosemarie, Sally, Wes and Ann, David, and Sandy. For Christ Church, Baby Bo, Aaron, Gary, Liz, Linda, Peter, and Robert and Jennifer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving God, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for this time of reflection. A priest who will shepherd us as a shared ministry that welcomes all people while valuing our diversity as congregations and individuals. May we work with wisdom beyond our individual concerns. Help us to tell our stories as we search for that person who will lead lead us us as as we seek seek a better understanding of your love and the surprises you have in store for us. We pray pray that that with our new priest, we will find delight in the journey journey of our shared ministry. We pray pray this through Jesus Christ, Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you 
opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace, and we extend that peace to those who are worshiping with us online at this time. Peace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. Our offertory hymn this morning is number 339. Dwell with us. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, wind, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you, and we wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as we prepare ourselves in person to receive Holy Communion, uh, we join our intentions with those who are joining us online uh, who will be receiving communion spiritually. So let us join together all in saying the prayer for spiritual communion. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. When we cannot give you sacramentally, come spiritually into our hearts and hold out our hands in longing for communion with you. Help us to embrace you, knowing that you are already here, and unite us wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Our communion hymn this morning the body is of number Christ, 700. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Of Christ, the bread of
body of Christ. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as we have a few announcements before we conclude today's liturgy. I do hope that you all take with you the white insert in the uh, booklet that you received uh, on the way in. On the back side of that is a listing of events coming up in our stewardship campaign. Uh, one of them has already happened this morning at Trinity Church uh, following their service last Sunday. A number of you came to the Marshall Room where we talked um, about our stewardship campaign uh, and the theme, uh, A Future with Hope, uh, a verse uh, that comes from the prophet Jeremiah. Um, and we talked about the ways that God has, uh, has uh, reached out to us and fulfilled hopes for us and the hopes that we have for our church communities in 2022 as we look ahead to the way we will prayerfully make our pledge commitments to next year at Christ Church and its uh, financial well-being. Uh, so we had that last Sunday. Uh, there's one this morning at Trinity Church. As you'll see on the, the insert uh, bulletin here, uh, there are two more offerings on Zoom. Uh, that'll be on Tuesday night and Thursday night. Um, again, these meetings are identical. If you've gone to one, uh, you don't need to go to all of them. Uh, I know last Sunday uh, we met, but we also had the uh, Christmas meeting happening at the same time, the Christmas fair meeting. Uh, so some people were not able to go. So there are two more opportunities, October 26th and 28th. Um, there is a link on the bulletin where you can go to the website of Trinity Church, and it's now on Christ Church's website as well. And you can get the Zoom link there to join us. There's plenty else coming in the upcoming weeks, and we'll bring those announcements as they become relevant. Uh, on the inside of your bulletin, a number of announcements. I won't read them all, but next Sunday is the final Sunday to bring uh, donations for the United Thank Offering, uh, UTO. Uh, the United Thank Offering makes grants to Episcopal churches um, from the donations they received. I know Trinity and Christ Church have both received grants over the years uh, from these kinds of donations. Um, so if you have a donation to bring, you can do so online with the link that's there. 
uh, or you can bring a check or an envelope marked UTO, and we'll make sure it gets passed on to the National United Thank Offering Group. Coming up uh, after October 31st is All Saints Day and All Saints Sunday, which will be no Sunday, November 7th. Uh, over here on the lectern, we have a, a clipboard with a yellow sign-up sheet. Um, if you have a loved one whom you would like commemorated and remembered in our prayers on All Saints Sunday, uh, please sign up there this Sunday or next week. Uh, we will read the names of loved ones, um, as the prayer book says, whom we love but see no longer. Uh, those who have gone to the life eternal ahead of us. So we will commemorate them on All Saints Sunday. That's a way to get them, get uh, the names uh, on our list. <coughs> uh, there's a number of other items here. I know there'll be more details coming about that Christmas fair, as well as Trinity Church's uh, Holly Berry Fair, which will be the same day. Uh, at the very bottom of the page, the last announcement I'll bring is from our search committee, the Vicar Search Committee has asked that you send them, and there's an email address there, they ask that you send them uh, photos, pictures of the church and uh, people, activities that you might have. Um, you may have noticed that the Trinity Church and Christ Church websites got a facelift over the past few weeks. They look very different. Um, in part, uh, it was time for the technology to get an update. Uh, we hope to have more photos out there. But it was in part uh, the work of our search committee who were trying to make sure that as we continue the vicar search process uh, that we're putting a good face out to our broader community. Uh, and they would love to have as part of that face on the website, faces, uh, pictures, uh, pictures of our activities, doing things together, uh, things happening in the church as well. So take those pictures, send them to the vicar search committee and we'll be sharing them on the website. Other announcements? Anything that's not printed here I didn't say that we need to draw attention to? Hearing nothing, we'll conclude with a blessing and, and with our final hymn. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn this morning is number 528. <laughs> Church neglect its mission and the gospel go unheard. Help us witness to its purpose with renewed integrity, with the Spirit's gifts and King. 
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 